this is your boy, Movie Maker Doug 55. Today, Andy McPhee and I welcome you to Coffee and Conversation, and we have a great guest with us, Jeanette Rodriguez. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Andy. It's great to be yeah. here. No sweat. And Doug, just let everybody know where we all are. I'm in Arizona. Andy is somewhere in the middle of Arizona and California in a ghost town. <laughs> and Jeanette is in um, Miami. In Miami, yes. Yep, Miami, yes. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what's in Miami, the, Florida. What's the weather like down there? Hot. Still, it yeah, gets a little bit cool and then it goes right back to being hot. So, like, yeah, not yeah. much of a winter at all. Yeah, it's been the same. It's pretty hot where I am at the moment. Um, but yeah, LA's sort of been the same. When I was with staying with Doug in Arizona, it wasn't actually really that hot. It was pretty mild, right, Doug? Yeah, it was pretty mild, but there's still yeah. a little bit of heat. So, Jeanette, I must yes. ask you, uh, I must ask you. Uh, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Miami, and um, I was born and raised here in Florida, in Miami, mostly. And my parents are, my parents are Latin and from a uh, Cuban descent. Hmm, pretty cool. So yeah, that's really cool, man. I'm originally from Colorado. <laughs> Colorado is cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's nice there though. Beautiful, beautiful views, but it's cold there. <laughs> good too, people, too cold. good people come from there. Too cold. There you go. That's nice. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a ghost. Yeah. Bit of a ghost town though. Um, yeah. So, uh, Dougie, you've got a few more questions there, right? Uh, delving into. Um, Jeanette's interests, which uh, are, are pretty interesting, yeah? Yeah, for sure. So, Jeanette, I must ask you, uh, when did you decide to go for a career in the arts? Well, I, um, I made a decision when I was very young because my parents came from Cuba and they struggled to get here and they fought for their freedom and mine. So I figured not, not to waste my time and just go for my dreams. So when I was very young, I, I still love movies. I go and I watch like three to five a week and I'm watching them at home all the time. And so I just love living that actor's life where you're just experiencing everything and in the moment and you challenge yourself. So. I've always been a, t a type of person to challenge myself, and I just decided that uh, I wanted to pursue acting and art, and because I was an art teacher, so you know I'm just very creative, and so I just decided that it didn't matter of the norm, because my family was more like normal, and I would be a little bit different, but I decided that that's what made me happy, and I was gonna go for it. I wasn't gonna waste, you know, settling in life. Ah. Uh. Very, very interesting. That sounds like a pretty unique upbringing. I'm glad to see that you're pursuing a career in the arts world and acting. That's that's pretty cool. Have you acted in any films at all? I actually acted in Andy's um, film. I've done more shows, reality shows, competition shows, and date a dating show that I'm currently on uh and i've done more shows type type of deals like that and commercials but um i started taking acting lessons with andy and we met through uber and he's an amazing person amazing mentor and teacher so i decided to go with go along with it and are just it just so happened that when you put things out there they come to you and and andy had this opportunity with a guy from another country and then our class and we decided to put a little a little um, independent film together. And that was really my first film. So I was able to conquer my fears and with the help of Andy and our group, and it was just amazing. So little by little, I'm checking off my, my bucket list and my, and my little challenge boxes. That's cool. uh, you, you've already, I think you've got a link to that film, Doug. Yeah, I do on my uh, channel and I can show. Yeah. Yeah. 
Here it is right now, followers, her role in the film. <laughs> awesome. So, and, and so that film, I don't know if people realize, but it was done in shutdown. Like you weren't allowed to go anywhere and you allowed to have four or five people together. So what everybody did, I actually didn't have anything to do with it. Like I organized it, but I just stepped away and let everyone else run it, which was really fun because everybody like Jeanette was in Miami. There was, uh, I was in LA. I only, we only had, I only had a little bit to play and just for fun, but the rest of the guys were in Australia. And so they had to organize a whole lot of, pretty awkward stuff because of COVID, but man, when I saw the finished product, like it was actually really good um, for <laughs> getting a group of people together during COVID. Like on the script, the script came from a young man in Kazakhstan. He's a guy I was mentoring for a while and we just wanted to get one of his scripts up and running. So we gave it to the group and then Jeanette had a bit of input into it as well. Like with uh, James Dean, who was sort of directing it, another young actor from Melbourne, so everyone really, really got in together and was all part of it. You know, they were all directing and offering parts and changing their characters around. So it was a good challenge, you know, and there's no pressure because there's no, there's no payment. There was no time to get it finished by. It was just a group collaboration, um, yeah. which, which really, it, it worked really well, like really well. Yeah, that yeah. Was, it was, was great. It was pretty amazing. It was pretty amazing to, uh, it was, it was amazing to be able to, you know, whatever obstacle came our way, we had to figure it out. And some people mm. in Australia, some were there, like, they didn't even see each other, nor did none of us met only through, through Zoom and mm. FaceTime. So it was really cool to, to be able to, to get through, you know, jump over the hurdles and through the obstacles and make it happen no matter what. And that, in the end, that's the reward is that we actually made a film, our first film, nobody really knowing what we were doing, but we figured it out and it came out awesome. Mm. Yeah. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And I don't think there's any rehearsals either. No. <laughs> no, not at, all. Much, yeah. not at all. <laughs> I think it was, it was pretty much done straight off the straight off the cuff, really. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, except for like, if you guys noticed, there was a couple bloopers that I actually sent to James Dean when I was filming my part that I had to do on my own, but they were so funny that he decided to include them. So that was like real life happening at that moment. Oh, and yeah, I that's right. Mistakes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did too, which did, but like Doug will put the the full link up there. You might have just seen a clip of it, but he'll put the full link up on this and everyone will be able to have a, a look at it. How, how long does it go for, Doug? Is it is it about 10 minutes or 15 or something? I think it's like, a, I think it's no more than 10, but I'll have to check. Uh, D Doug, um, I don't know if you know, you may have the questions there, but uh, Jeanette, Jeanette used to do a lot of, um, uh, uh, what can I say? Um, I was going to say risky. Reality shows. Yeah, I was going to say risky, but anything's risky. It's more, it's more of, uh, fighting your fears type uh, events and that. Yeah. Ooh. Um, did you know that, Doug? No, I didn't. Tell me a uh, little bit about that. So the way that things started was, um, my sister's ex-boyfriend called me one day. It was like, you'd be the perfect partner for me to do this show that I am might get might be pissed, possibly picked for but i need a teammate i need a partner and i said well what is it and he's like fear factor and i said oh of course i'm all in i have no problem with that and then he says well i do have to ask your sister first because you know she was i dated her and i said she's not gonna get down and dirty in the mud eat bugs and do whatever it takes oh no 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 i'm gonna be your partner i've got this Anyway, he asked her, she said exactly that. Oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that stuff. And I said, give me the phone. I'm your partner. So we went, auditions. They loved us. Next thing you know, they're, they're making us um, advertise ourselves. I thought it was going to be a lot easier. I thought it was going to be like, you audition, you get picked, you're on the show. That's not the way it was for us. It's called, um, it's a Burger King Fear Factor. If you guys want to check it out, you can go on YouTube. And you can see, you can type up Burger King Fear Factor and you'll see me 
doing this with my partner. And, you know, the good thing was that when I put my mind to it, I research, I play the part in my head physically, I train and I conquer. And that's what happened when we went on the show. We ended up, I had him uh, partner up with me outside of the show prior to the show. And we got together and did a bunch of, you know, obstacle races. I was tied under the water in a pool. I made him swim over with no, no breathing until he got there. He almost drowned. I almost drowned. But hey, the show is about that. You got to face the fears and step up to the plate when it gets tough. So that's what we did. And it paid off because we ended up, mm-hmm. well, actually, I won't tell you what happened. Why don't you look yeah, it up? Done. Burger King yeah. Fear Factor. What impact do you want to have on future generations of actors and actresses? The impact, the impact that I would like for them to have is get over yourself and just go for it. Because it's all about what you say to yourself, how you believe in yourself, what you think of yourself. You don't want to have stinking thinking. You want to have positive thoughts. Every day you wake up in the mirror, you're proud of yourself. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You're strong. You could do this every single day. For me, another important factor has been God because God created us perfect in his eyes and we're his sons and daughters. And so therefore, because he sees us as perfect, we should see ourselves as perfect because we were born that way. And we will go back to that body again one day. So most people are taught when they're growing up are mostly negative talk. And unfortunately, that comes from generational family that they don't know better. So you have to you have to step away from that and say to yourself, that's not true. I respect your thinking, but it's I don't believe in that. And you have to. Follow what you believe in. And what is that? That's what you have to tell yourself is what do I believe in? Because what you believe in is what you become. So if you don't think you're good enough, then you won't be good enough. But if you think you're like a Wonder Woman, like Wonder Woman played, that was one of her first parts. She could have been thinking, oh, I'm not Wonder Woman. And she wouldn't have gotten the part. But she thought I could do this. And now look at her. Gal Hmm. Gardo. She's amazing. She's a wonderful meant you know a wonderful example of like the things that you can do and she started late in life with acting so that's what i want people to that's what i want people to take with them that's what i think is important is get over yourself and just get it done that's it believe and it'll happen so that's really cool and like you said she did start late and she she believed in herself um awesome so doug now Uh, You can edit this bit out. Ask the question again and then ask it like, uh, and we'll see which one works best. Ask the same question, but what legacy or what would you like to have to your friends and family and people you meet? Like ask the same question, but not about the acting, about life, friends that Jeanette meets and, you know, um, the future of. First of all, I I just wanted to ask, uh, what did you say? You don't want a what thinking because you cut out. Oh, um, stinking thinking. Oh, Joyce stinking Myers. Thinking. Yeah. Joyce Myers. Joyce Myers is a pastor and she preaches about stinking thinking. 